How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This video is going to be helping you guys achieve the very best gameplay experience possible on your system regardless of the system specs, all the way from low end laptops all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware. By the end of this video you will be achieving the best FPS possible for your machine, resulting in major improvements to reducing input latency, optimizing your in-game settings for the best competitive advantage possible, whilst maintaining a great level of visual fidelity. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results from this video, please do leave a like on the videos, it does help me out tremendously. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content and wish to stay up to date with the channel, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a new video gets posted to the channel. With all that said and done, let's get straight on into the guide. Before we kick things off with optimizing the game settings and files themselves, we're first of all going to be ensuring that we're running on the latest update to Windows 10, as this will allow you to unlock all of the necessary features with inside of Windows and the in-game settings themselves to ensure that we can fine tune your game to the best of its ability and iron out any issues you might be experiencing from using older versions of Windows or older graphics card drivers. We can now go ahead and actually optimize the game applications themselves to ensure that we're getting the best performance possible. Simply navigate down to the Battle.net launcher, navigate over to Call of Duty Cold War, navigate up to the Options menu, with Inside of Face scroll down to Show in Explorer, with Inside of Face simply navigate inside of the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War folder. Start off by right clicking the launcher, navigate down to Properties. Go to the Compatibility tab, ensure that Disable Full Screen Optimizations has been checked, navigate down to Override High DPI Scaling Behavior, check this option, press OK, Apply and OK. We're then going to repeat the optimization for the Black Ops Cold War application, right click, Properties, Compatibility, Disable Full Screen, Change High DPI, Override, OK, Apply and OK. Once we're inside of the Battle.net launcher at this point it's also recommended to remind you that you can actually modify which parts of the game you have installed so you can drastically reduce the file size of the game and potentially place it on a faster drive. Do remember that you can always navigate up to the options menu, navigate down to modify install, navigate over to the right hand side to modify install. With inside of here you can then deselect the options you wish to uninstall from your game if you're done with them. So let's say you're done with the campaign now you can simply select this option and our game size will be drastically reduced. So for me simply removing the campaign and dead ups from my game and just keeping multiplayer and zombies which are the only modes I currently play, I'm able to save up an extra 50 gigabytes from my install. Once you guys have selected which you wish to keep, navigate to the right hand side, click confirm, and this will then update your game and remove the unnecessary files. We can then apply some optimizations to the Blizzard launcher itself. For this, navigate over to the Blizzard logo on the top left hand side, then navigate down to settings. With inside of this panel, ensure that allow multiple instances of Battle.net is unchecked. It's recommended to set this to when I launch a game, go into the drop down menu and select this to exit Battle.net completely. Once that's then done, we can then proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see an option titled Use Browser Hardware Acceleration when available. Regardless of your system specs, we're going to navigate over and disable this option, then select Restart Later. At this point in the video, we're now going to be updating our graphics card drivers to ensure that we're running on the latest drivers for Call of Duty Cold War, specifically to further optimize the game and enhance performance. To find out which driver you need to download and which graphics card you have, the easiest way to do this is to simply right click on the desktop, you'll either be seeing the Nvidia Control Panel or the AMD Radeon Settings Panel. If you don't see either of those options, navigate down to your task bar, right click, open up task manager. Navigate over to the performance tab on the top left hand side, then scroll down to GPU. With inside of here, navigate up to the top right hand side, you'll then be seeing which graphics card you have installed to your system. With that information, you can then navigate inside of the description down below and click on the corresponding GPU driver update link, which matches the GPU in your system. So for Nvidia GeForce users, click on the GeForce link. You'll be brought to this web page found here. Go to the automatic driver updates utility found up here in the top, select download now, simply open it up. It will then detect and install the latest graphics card driver for you. For AMD Radeon users, it's a very similar experience. Click on the AMD Radeon link below. You'll be brought to this web page found here. Never get over to download now. Once the software is downloaded, simply open it up. Once again, it will detect and install the latest graphics card driver for the GPU you have installed. Once you've updated your graphics card drivers, it's essential to ensure that you're running on the best settings for the graphics card drivers to ensure the best performance. For NVIDIA users, go to your desktop, right click and open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel. With inside of the NVIDIA control panel, navigate up to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Navigate down to the middle option titled use the advanced 3D image settings. Check this, then go down to the bottom right hand side and press apply. Then navigate over to the left hand side to manage 3D settings. With inside of here, I want you guys to go ahead and simply pause the video, copy all of the settings shown with inside of this screen. We'll then proceed to continue on. Pause the video once again, set all of the settings shown on screen once again and continue this in 
until all of your settings match the settings shown in the video. Once all of those settings have been set up, navigate once again to the bottom right hand side and apply those settings. For those of you running on AMD Radeon graphics cards, simply right click on your desktop, navigate inside of the Radeon control panel, with inside of the control panel, navigate over to the global display settings, then follow all of the on-screen display settings shown here. Once all of those options have been set, follow the next screenshot. Once you've set all of the options available, apply those settings and we're then good to continue on. We can then go ahead and further tweak our Windows GPU settings. For this, simply navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in GPU space settings. With inside of it, navigate over to the graphics settings tab. Once this opens up, depending on your system specs and if your system supports this option, you'll have an option titled hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you do have this option available and you're playing Black Ops or even Warzone, it's recommended to actually have this option turned to the on position. Regardless if you see this option or not, we're also going to be navigating down to our graphics performance preference tab, going down and clicking on browse. With inside of it, we're then going to navigate inside of the installation directory for Call of Duty Black Ops. Go ahead over to the Black Ops Cold War application, select this, then select add. Once that's then done, navigate over to the application with inside of the list, click on the options menu and ensure that high performance is selected at the bottom, then press save and we can then go ahead and exit out. We're now going to be booting into the game to further fine tune and optimize our in-game settings. So simply navigate over to the Battle.net launcher and go ahead and press play. What we're now going to go ahead and do is simply boot into a custom game on one of your favorite maps, I'm going to be using Cartel with no bots. I've chosen this area on the Cartel map. Once you guys have done that, go ahead and press the escape button, navigate over to your settings. With inside of it, we're then going to be navigating up to the interface tab, scrolling all the way down to the bottom, and we're going to be looking for the FPS counter option. Go ahead and make sure this is switched to the on position, then go back. In the top left hand side of your screen now, you should now see a live FPS counter. I'm then going to go ahead and press escape, navigate over to the settings tab. We're then going to navigate over to the graphics tab. To start off, we're going to be making sure the full screen is selected, navigating down to our refresh rate, scrolling all the way down to the bottom and selecting the highest available option for you. Gameplay vSync is recommended to have disabled, menu vsync disabled, Nvidia reflex low latency is recommended to have enabled normal regardless of which graphics card you have, display resolution should be set to the maximum resolution which is supported by your monitor, navigating down to field of view. Much like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone, the higher you have your field of view the higher FPS you'll be receiving as this does slightly change how object distance is rendered with inside of the game so the higher this value is set to the better FPS you'll be getting. For me personally I like to go with 110. Then navigating down to frame rate limit. If you're running on a lower end system System or your system is prone to overheating issues or just runs hot in general, implementing an FPS cap is recommended. Otherwise, I recommend completely uncapping your FPS just like so, especially if you're running on an NVIDIA graphics card which supports reflex low latency. For those of you looking for the very best FPS possible regardless of your system specs, all the way from low end to ultra high end, so if that's all you're looking for and you don't mind how the game looks, simply turn every single one of these options off or to the lowest setting available. The settings I'm about to showcase are going to be all of my recommended settings for the best competitive edge, allowing for the best FPS possible and a great visual fidelity. This brings us down to texture quality. The highest recommended value for this is going to be medium. Model quality is going to be set to medium or low. Special effects quality is going to be set down to medium. Screen space reflection is going to be switched down to disable. Object view distance is going to be set to medium or low. Volumetric lighting is also going to be switched all the way down to low. Shadow quality is going to be set to either medium or low. Dynamic shadows can be switched on if you wish to see enemy shadows with inside of the game. For me I'm not too bothered so I'm going to be switching this off. Special effects shadows should be also disabled. Weapon shadow should also be disabled. We're then going to turn off any ray tracing effects which might be enabled. This now brings us down to NVIDIA DLSS. We're going to be switching this on and fine tuning this setting later, so for now we're going to go ahead and select disabled. We're then going to navigate down to anti-aliasing quality. For the recommended best FPS I would go with disabled, but if the game looks too sharp and jaggy for you, set this to low at the highest, as this will give a smooth SMAA one time. Ambient occlusion quality should be disabled. Motion blur should also be disabled. You can then scroll down to subsurface scattering, disable this. Order independent transparency should be disabled. This then brings us down to VRAM usage target. We're going to be customizing this with inside of the game config files after this step, so this step doesn't particularly matter. For now, I'd recommend keeping it as your default setting. Once all of those settings are applied, go down to the bottom, select apply, go back, then tap back with inside of the game. As you can see now, I'm getting around about 155 to 160 frames. Now, if you do have an NVIDIA RTX card, go ahead and press escape once again, navigate to your settings menu, scroll all the way down to the NVIDIA DLSS option. I'd first of all start off by going all the way over to quality, applying this, tapping back with inside of the game and seeing how your FPS is now affected. As you can see, we're getting around about 185 frames average. If that FPS bump isn't enough and you're still happy with how the game looks, we can go ahead and bump this down even further by navigating back with inside of the settings and switching this to our balanced mode. As you can now see, 
see we're getting around about 190 frames and the game still looks fantastic. For those of you that do not have the Nvidia DLSS options, or if you don't wish to use them or do not have compatible hardware, if you do not have these options available to you but you still want an additional FPS boost, navigate all the way up to the top of the graphics tab and navigate down to the render resolution option. On the right hand side of the screen now there'll be recommended values for all system specs and what you should set this to according to your system spec. The lower the render resolution you are using, the blurrier your game is going to be, but the better your game is going to perform. So everyone watching is going to have a different personal preference when it comes to this step, so use the recommended values on the right hand side, apply the option, boot into the game, see how the game looks, if you're happy with it, keep the option. It's all about finding your system's fine balance and your personal preference as to how much FPS you want in exchange for visual fidelity. Once you are happy with your in-game options, simply go ahead and exit to desktop. Once we've navigated back over to the desktop, it's now time to go ahead and modify our config file. To do this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, navigate up to your Documents tab. With inside of here, go inside of the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War folder, go inside of Player, double click on the config file, this should then open up in Notepad. With inside of here, we're going to start off by going over to our mesh quality. I'm going to be going with a mesh quality of 3, texture underscore filter is going to be set to 0, texture quality is going to be set to 4, we're then going to scroll down to Disable Dynamic Light Shadows, and we're going to be setting this to 1, Disable Dynamic Sun Shadows, 1, then navigating down to Shadow underscore filtering, changing this to zero. We can then proceed to scroll down even further, going over to our maximum number of overlapping transparency layers, changing this to a value of 10. We're then going to proceed to scroll down to our HDR options. With inside of here, I'd recommend going over to Enable Screen Space Reflection, setting this to zero. SSR underscore gloss threshold is going to be set directly to zero. We're then going to proceed to scroll down once again to the auto underscore cull radius, and I recommend setting this to a value of three. Volumetric light quality is going to be set to zero. Volumetric underscore light underscore sample is going to be set to a value of 0 0.5. Scrolling down once again to terrain texture filtering quality, we're then going to be setting this to zero or number two. Then we're getting down to terrain tile quality and we're going to be setting this to a value of 10. Shadow underscore preset, you are using low for this, set this to two. Otherwise set this to three for very low. Then we're getting down to high resolution UI textures. I'm going to be switching this to zero. We can then proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom where we have a few more advanced options. We're going to be setting our video memory usage to a value of 0.55. With inside of here, we can then navigate up to our worker underscore threads. To find out which number you need to input with inside of this box, navigate down to your taskbar, right click, and open up Task Manager. With inside of here, we're then going to be navigating up to the Performance tab, clicking on CPU. In the bottom right hand side, you'll be seeing Cores and Logical Processors. Whichever your number of cores is, for me that's 12, is going to be the number we're going to be setting in our worker underscore threads. So for me, that's going to be 12. Once all of that's been set, we can then navigate up to the top left hand side, click on File, click on Save, and we can then exit out of the game config. Now, for any point you wish to revert all of those game config settings and regenerate a brand new stock config, it's very simple and easy to do. Just navigate back inside of your Documents folder, right click on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and delete this folder. For this we're going to be starting off with the Windows Power Plan. This is very simple and easy to change. For this navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in Power Space Plan. Click on the Edit Power Plan option with inside of here. Navigate up to the navigation bar at the top, click on Power Options. We can then go ahead and select Show Additional Plans. The power plan we're going to be selecting will, will depend on whether or not you're running on an Intel based system or an AMD Ryzen based system. For Intel users, you're going to be wanting to go with the high performance power plan with inside of here or alternatively, just the standard balanced. For those of you running on AMD Ryzen based processors, if you do have the option available to you, go with either the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan or the AMD Ryzen balanced. For me, I'm running on a Ryzen based system, so I'm going to be going with high performance. Once the power plan has been selected on the left hand side, go to the top right hand side and exit out. The next step is quite basic, but is often overlooked. We're going to be navigating down to the bottom right hand side, clicking on our icon tray, and we're going to start by closing out of all unnecessary programs which do not need to be running in the background whilst we're playing our game. This will benefit every single PC out there regardless of the spec. Obviously for lower end systems you'll be able to free up a lot more resources, but just in general, close out of all the programs that do not need to be open whilst you're playing your game. For instance, I do not need Chrome open anymore so I'm going to be going ahead and right clicking and selecting exit. If you see programs with inside of here and you're not entirely sure what they do or how important they are, just simply leave them alone. This now brings us on to an incredibly worthwhile optimization for any of you that use Discord. Simply open up inside of the Discord application, navigate to the bottom left hand side to your user settings cog and click on this once. We can Start off by navigating over to the overlay. With inside of the overlay tab, we're going to be navigating up to the top left hand side to enable in game overlay and ensuring that this is actually switched off. This should not be switched on for any game and is known to cause FPS inconsistencies and issues in most titles. If you are using any custom overlays with inside of the game, it is recommended to switch them off. We can then navigate down to the bottom left hand side once again, clicking on the appearance tab. With inside of here, scroll all the way down to the bottom to the advanced section, you'll see an option titled hardware acceleration. For medium end to high end PCs, it's recommended to actually switch this off. 
but for those of you running on lower end PCs, make sure that this option is switched on, as this will give you better performance with inside of Discord and stop you from lagging whilst playing demanding games. So again, medium end to high end systems, turn this off. Medium to low end systems, turn this on. Once those options have been set, we can then go ahead and minimize out of the Discord program. And this now leads us on to one of the most effective optimizations with inside of this entire video for every single game you play, not just Call of Duty Black Ops. This optimization comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner or ISLC. Now in nearly every single one of my optimization videos, I recommend this program, as it's a fantastic two-in-one optimization tool. The first part of the program will help clear out your standby list in the background, freeing up an excess pool of memory or RAM, ensuring that you aren't running into RAM bottlenecks or running into any hard throttling. The second part of the program comes in the form of the timer resolution application, which can help drastically reduce the input latency between your game, operating system, and the hardware you have installed for a much snappier and faster feeling game. This program is completely free and compatible with every single game and application on which you're using. To download and install the program, it's very simple and easy to do. Navigate inside of the description down below and find the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner or ISLC link. You'll be brought to this web page found here. Simply scroll down towards the bottom, find the official download here hyperlink, click on this hyperlink and the program will then be downloaded. Navigate down to the program, select open. You'll then be brought into a folder. Simply drag that folder onto your desktop. Alternatively, I have 7-zip installed, so I'm going to be extracting this to my desktop, just like so, then pressing extract. You'll then be met with a folder in your desktop with an identical name. Simply double click on the folder, open up the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program by double clicking, and the program will look very similar to this. It does need a minor bit of setup and it's very simple and easy to do. For the first box on the left hand side, set this to 1024. For the second box, this needs to be set to roughly half of your system memory. You can see this number at the top left hand side of the program. For me, I have 32,000 megabytes available or 32 gigabytes. So half of that is going to be 16,000 megabytes or 16 gigabytes. Once that's done, navigate over to the right hand side to enable custom time resolution, check the box, then navigate up to wanted time resolution, remove the value and set the value of 0 0.50, then use the delete key. And last but not least, we can then navigate down to ISLC polling rate, go into the drop down menu. For lower end systems to medium end systems, set this to 1000. And for high end gaming PCs, set this to 500. Once that's done, navigate over to start on the right hand side, then go ahead to the top and click on purge standby list. The program is now running and we're then good to go ahead and minimize the program and leave it running in the background. All we now need to go ahead and do is simply boot into our game. But before I do that, I'm also going to be setting a very quick CPU overclock and GPU overclock to ensure that I'm getting the best FPS possible. And all there is left to do now is to simply go ahead into the Battle.net launcher and press play. And there you guys have it. That is my ultimate FPS increase guide for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. If you have enjoyed this video and are happy with your results, please do leave a like in the video as it does help me out tremendously. And let me know of your results, questions, queries, tips, tricks, or suggestions for other content in that comment section down below, as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a new video goes live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Panjano, and I'll see you in the next one.